Hello everybody and welcome to IELTS Live Thursday. So today I want to talk about things you might be doing in your IELTS reading, things I call IELTS myths that uh, will not help you and in, fi in fact they can hinder you from getting a good score. So if your scores in reading are not reaching your target and you don't know why, then you should listen to this short live because some of these things, I'm going to talk about three things in particular, might be things that you're doing and they might be stopping you from getting your score in IELTS reading. So this all came about because I was working with a student one-to-one -one yesterday on IELTS reading and this is a student that I've worked with for quite some time and I was quite surprised at a couple of things that had happened in his IELTS reading um, that really were not helping him and I had thought these had been um, talked about and driven from his reading um, activity quite a long time ago but clearly he was still thinking about these things and they were stopping him from getting a good score. So what are these things? These are some of the tips and tricks that you sometimes hear about or find out about on YouTube or on other websites um, and they are things that people tell you to do to improve the speed of your reading. But actually, they don't improve the speed of your reading and in fact, they stop you from finding the right answer. So I've picked three of them that I see people, uh, well, people tell me about over and over and I want to explain to you why they don't help and why you should stop doing them. So the first one is skim the passage quickly first to get an idea about the topic. Right, number one, I want to know why you would skim the passage when you don't know what you need for the answers. So to my mind, this practice is just wasting time. You can find out about the topic of the reading from the title. So most um, readings that you have in IELTS, both general training and in the um, academic, will give you a title at the beginning of the passage. If there isn't a title, that means one of the questions that you'll get is to ask you to provide a title. So even when there isn't a title, I would not skim the whole passage. You might just look at the introduction perhaps, but in most cases, the title and sometimes a subtitle is all you need to look at in order for you to understand about the topic. Now, the other danger with following this rule is that students start underlining things, underlining words, underlining phrases, and I then see reading passages that are so full of underlinings that it just creates confusion. If you underline things, these should be mostly in the um, questions. So where I see a student work with lots of underlinings in the passage and no underlinings in the questions, there are alarm bells ringing. So what you should focus on is the questions and then find the place in the passage. So any skimming, scanning, underlining or reading that is not directly related to the question is wasting time and is distracting you from the actual question. So no need to skim, just look at the heading and the subheading. Okay, the second myth that I want to talk about is that things come in order. Right, okay, quite often some of the questions do come in order, but you shouldn't always expect this. And I find lots of students tell me this. Oh, but it can't be in that paragraph because number two question was in the third paragraph. It doesn't always follow that things are in order. And if you have that in your mindset, then I think you're going to miss some easy answers because you're not going back. You're always going forwards. 
Um, so forget about things being order in order and just concentrate on the keywords and on finding those keywords in the question. And I've often come across um, students who are missing lots of very easy answers because they just feel they've got to go forwards and never backwards. And this isn't the case. If it's the first question of a passage, then obviously you're going to start at the beginning. But if it's somewhere in the middle, there's no reason why that information can't be in the first paragraph just as much as in the last paragraph. So don't get fixated on this thing about all the questions being in order. It's not necessarily the case. And especially when you get to passage three, it's most often the case that you have to go back a little and forwards a little. And also, I've seen this go to such a degree that when a student finds a keyword in a sentence, they only read after the keyword and not the bit of the sentence before the keyword. This doesn't make any sense in language. You should always read the whole sentence to get the whole idea of what that sentence is saying. And I have seen again and again students losing easy answers because they were so fixed on going forwards and never going backwards. So forget that rule, it doesn't help you. And it often makes you get the wrong answer. And the third and final one, which came from my conversation yesterday that I talked about earlier with my student, is about yes, no, not given. And we were working on yes, no, not given. And he had put down um, false for one of the questions. And I said, but it's clear this is not false. It's clear that this is true. And he said, yes, but I don't have false in one of those questions. He said, you have to have a false, you have to have a not given, you have to have a true. And I said, why? I've seen exercises where they're all not given, or I've seen exercises where they're all true, or they're all no. Don't have these silly rules. It doesn't make any sense. What you have to do is look at the question, look at the information in the passage and match them together. It's not a case of we're always going to have two false, two not given, two true. If that were the case, then, you know, IELTS would be a lot easier. So there is no rule about how many false, how many true, how many yes, how many no, how many not given. And you could quite easily have an exercise on true, false, not given where there is no not given or on yes, no, not given, where there isn't a no. That's quite possible. And what it does is you're, you, you're playing this like some kind of matching game. You're not actually looking at the reading. This is a test of reading. It's a test of your ability to find information in a passage. And if you have these rules that are nothing to do with reading, they are only gonna slow you down, distract you and ensure that you get the wrong answers. So why would you say, I think this is false, but I haven't got a not given here, so it must be not given. That makes no sense at all. It's like a lottery. So you're not, you're doing it without, without actually looking at the passage. So don't do these things. Don't skim the whole passage before you get going. There's no need to do that. It wastes time. Don't, believe that everything is in order it stops you finding some easy answers and finally you don't have to have yes and no and not given in every um, set of yes no not given questions they might be all yes they might be all no they might be all not given it's unlikely but it's possible so don't follow these rules slavishly they just cost you marks and if you want help with reading or listening or writing, then you can do no better than join my IELTS Champions Club. IELTS Champions Club is a place where you can get help with anything you're struggling with. You can post your writing and I'll check it. You can post any questions you get wrong in reading and I will explain why you got them wrong. We meet once a week and we do some training and then we have longer trainings every month. So you can get every scrap of help you need for IELTS if you join IELTS Champions Club. 
It is a club, there is a subscription to pay, but it's a very small amount and you can join for one month for just $27 and you can get as much help as you need and the students that have have joined champions club and taken their exam have now got quite high scores they've got seven seven point fives and eights so it's worth it to pay that 27 dollars and get daily help with your ielts um your ielts preparation and included is an IELTS self-study course on all aspects of IELTS. But the most important part of IELTS Champions Club is that you get my help whenever you ask for it. Whenever you ask for it, you just need to post a question and I will be on it for you. Okay, I'll put a link into IELTS Champions Club so you can find out more about how to join and what you get when you do join. And I would love to see you there. You can just join for a month and get as much help as you like in that month and then take your test and hopefully get the score that you want. Okay, thank you for watching and I'll see you all next week in IELTS Live Thursday and in this group too, if you have any specific questions, you can post them in the group and get some answers. But IELTS Champions Club will get you more detail. Okay, enjoy the rest of your day and bye-bye.